Hey everyone, GeForce41 here with another PGA Tour 2K23 course design tip tutorial, casual coaching. This week I'm doing some viewer requests. This is a request from Rapid2448. He sent uh, two courses my way to take a look at. This is Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. And if you've been on the Discord <laughs> site, you saw uh, Chelsea Saints reference to Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, uh, the movie. Uh, he's been posting some great train videos. There's a train simulator out there. He's been doing some videos on really cool stuff. I haven't tried it because if my kids see it, I'll never get them off the PlayStation. So uh, check out Chelsea's um, site. His uh, his his stop is the Casuals TV uh, YouTube channel, and uh, he'll be glad to have you there if you haven't been there already. But let's take a look at this one from uh, Rapid Two Four Four Eight. Obviously, you can tell. It's fantasy course. Um, first things first, pretty cool looking. Now, I'm not a fantasy course type of guy, so my input here is going to be fairly minimal on the course, I guess. But w people really do like these kind of courses, and we've implemented um, casual fun day again. Basically, uh, once a season, we will be doing a uh, fantasy-based course. But look at this look. I really like the, the look. Uh, it's a little dark, but I think it, it fits the ambiance here, right? You need the lighting uh, to get those orange cones signifying the runway and get all, all the lights and everything for the planes. You've got a plane that's just stopped midair right there. That's kind of cool with a little trail going. Uh, creative. And um, you've got a train. We'll look closer as I hit this drive at the train. So the, the planting looks pretty cool. It's a fall look. Um, and, uh, right at that kind of, uh, time of day, it looks to me like dusk. So the hole itself is pretty straightforward. We'll take a look at that in a second after we look at the, uh, the trains and the train tracks. I've always wanted to put trains and tracks in my courses. It's a little hard. Now we do have a train asset to put in there and you can make the tracks out of a few things. He used, uh, it looks like the bridges. And you sink them. There's a bunch of things you can sink them with bridges, fences, walls, or whatever to make the look of tracks. It takes a lot of time and effort. Just, you know, you can maybe copy and paste a little. But um, I haven't had the diligence to do that. I like the train stop, too. Pretty cool stuff. And the lights lighting up and everything like that. So that's pretty neat stuff. Um, and it's great. And But you got to make a course that's fun and playable, too, right? So... You know, that's the problem with some of these fantasy courses. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. But you can use your creativity on them. So there's a couple of bunkers here that are doggone just plain flat. I'm not sure if why or if that's on purpose. Um, one in the front, one in the back. So it's hard to talk about the golf and the strategy because fantasy courses are there to be unique, right? And a little bit different. Um, but you got to make it fun and appealing. And, you know, to me, the, the challenge is, is the replay value. Fantasy courses for me are maybe fun once, <laughs> if I get through the 18 holes. This is a 9-hole course, so making these type of courses as 9 holes, not a bad idea. Some folks like the 9-hole courses. Um, not a bad idea in real life if you can't fit the 18 in. Better to play 9 than nothing, right? So now we're going across the runway. we got some planes there. Uh, it's a very cool creative look. Uh, as far as the golf, it's a little narrow. You've got bunkers just pinching things. You know, meh. Um, but it's very flat. There's no kind of slope to the course, um, which makes sense if you're at an airport and you need a flat piece of land. But you could still put in some elevation changes around it and around the greens, because again, here we're just just plain flat. Um, you know that's going to get a little boring and tedious. So um, that is the problem I see with fantasy courses. They get boring, tedious. It's the same thing. Over and over, even if the holes are kind of unique. So you do got to switch it up and maybe get a little bit of a pitch to these greens. Raise them, elevate them. I'm not sure what's up with the bunkers, why they're they're playing flat like that. It looks like you took a giant flatten brush to the whole area and then maybe added some movement to the green. You know, so you have a bunker cutting into the green here. That's... You know, usually a, a no-no kind of thing, but there's some holes like that. There's, of course, the famous hole with the green in the middle. I'm sorry, with the bunker in the middle of the green. So the lighting is very low. Um, again, you got to be careful because it's hard to see, right? 
Um, so you gotta temper that, you know, that need to kind of make it look great and look really cool with, you kind of can't see what you're doing. Um, so there's a plane just hanging out in the middle, so you gotta uh, hit a draw around the plane. <laughs> over the runway and into a very small um, diamond-shaped green with five very thin bunkers surrounding it. So, again, not, you know, your standard golf stuff, but kind of cool. People do like this stuff. Um, you've got a plane in play, <laughs> which is a new one for me. Um, you know, it's a, it's a fun little test so far. We're not going to play the whole nine. We're going to get to a second course in a moment. We're going to play one more on this one. And I do hear some crowds. This is cool. But again, so now you got, you're a little bit repetitive. This is going around the bend and you're pinching it at the 300, right? So just got two fairway bunkers out there. So my advice is even though it's a fantasy course, you, you know, you, you should maybe put a little bit of the golf strategy knowledge in there. And make it interesting you can do fun and unique things with fun and unique shapes but it's going to get tedious if you just kind of do the same thing over and over even for nine holes I, I just love the trains i mean this is cool stuff that thing looks like it goes through the whole course um try not to shake the camera around too much but it goes on and on look looking through the trees there look at that so that's great stuff it's very hard to um have the patience to do all that i gotta tell you um, this one's got a little bit more shaping and contours. Looks that like that bunker on the right and that bunker on the left actually has some concavity to it. We might find out the hard way. Yes, we will. All right, so that's a little deep. So that's a little bath tumpy. There's you definitely need to uh, learn how to sculpt some bunkers. Um, check out my pot bunker, links bunker tutorial for, for more help, but there's plenty of videos out there and different techniques. My technique is not necessarily the best one. It just works for me. Um, but definitely think about your bunker sculpting, make it smooth. And even if you're doing a fantasy course, realistic, you can make it crazy. You can make a crazy deep bunker. That's for sure. Uh, on a fantasy course, but you still got to have some sort of, um, technique. All right, interesting stuff. Very creative, um, very unique. Let's take a look at the next one. All right, we are at Rainy Days of Summer by Rapid2448. Um, again, another fantasy course, a rainforest type feel here. Again, very pretty, but uh, folks, turn on the lights. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I mean. It, it might show up a little bit better on the video, but I'm playing this on my PlayStation 4 on a beautiful giant TV, and I can't see a thing. It's way too dark. So I get the look and the feel of things. You can still have the low lighting, but this is too dark. Um, can't see a thing. Maybe that's the point, kind of playing at, at night, but a little little too much on the fog in, in the distance. Um, it's very odd looking on my screen. And you just can't see what you're doing. So show off your work. Uh, this is, looks very pretty, actually. And yes, the low lighting's fine, but you can't see much of anything. Okay. The other thing is you got a tree in play here on an island fairway. So you've got a force carry to a very small and narrow fairway that you can only hit a three wood to, and you got a tree to contend with, and you got two, a one on each side. So, and this is an opening tee shot. A little much for me here, folks. Um, yeah, look at that. That's going to hit it and forget it. And, you know, I get having a hard shot occasionally, but this is your first hole. What are people going to do right here? They're going to turn it off. Uh, I'm going to re-hit. Okay, I've decided to re tee because I had no drop area down there. Sorry, but uh, again, what's going to happen, folks? They're going to... People are going to take that first tee shot, get frustrated, and turn it off. So your goal on the first hole is to make them want to play more and not want to either rage click or, or toss their controller across in the room. I don't even know where to go here. So I'm going out here. I don't know if this tree in front of me is going to be in play. No, it's not. That was probably the idea the first time. 
Um, and then obviously you got a huge bunker over there if you if you bail out left. So yeah, I would just say just a big no on this so far. Um, can I get that down there? I don't know. You know, now you and I got a huge force carry. I'm probably not going to make it, right? See what I mean? So if I'm playing this, I'm probably turning it off at this point. Okay, because there's nowhere to lay up, right? So I would have had a little pitch shot out here. And then you still have two tin in. So I get I get it being challenged. And now you got a very, very small green surrounded by bunkers with almost no entrance. Um, so, yeah. You, maybe you throw one of these type holes in, but... Kind of pick one of the challenges, not all of them. You know, you can have the the island fairway. Not that maybe have one tree sort of in play on a tee shot, but no island fairway. You know what I'm saying? You've got a whole bunch of things going on. It was very narrow, very small. The green's too small. You got bunkers surrounding it, no entrance. It's it's you got too many things going on, and a force carry on the layup. Um, so again, I know the fantasy courses are meant to be unique and maybe challenging. But don't overdo it with your holes. Try to make them strategic, not hard. Again, I can't see a damn thing. I could see a rainbow. Um, this looks a little bit better. But again, I don't even know where I'm hitting it. And that takes a slope nicely. Okay. You know, don't be afraid to give some room on fairways. And again, so very unique shake green. That's cool. Uh, 250 in, it's a par 5, but you're not lending an entrance in. You got the lenches off to the side, which I can't see if it's going to help or hurt my shot. So again, that could kick it either way, I can't tell. It looks flat, which is fine, it should roll it up and over. But there's no way to get here, none. Um, fine if it's a 3 shot hole, occasionally, but again, and then the, and the fairway's sloping me the wrong way. So we'll see if I can just thread the needle here. Kind of pulled it off. And there you go. So it can be done. Again, I can't see the hole. So, you know, I'm not, as you can tell, I'm not a huge fan of the fantasy courses, but um, some people do really like them and they can be great, but you, you know, you gotta be creative. And you've got to use your brain a little. Uh, you still got to keep to those fundamentals. Show off your work. Make sure the lighting is appropriate. You can do the low lighting. Um, and try to stick to some basic strategic concept of golf. You can do unique things like, you know, island fairways and things like that. Again, oh my god. <laughs> First of all, I would not want to be in that crowd with me hitting. Uh, two, that's a little bit small on the green. So, um, again, you know, A plus on, uh, a creativity, uh, and effort on these, but, you know, I'm not sure how much you're going to get in terms of replay value on them. You know, small green should go with short holes. Be, be creative. And that's, that was a little longer than... You'd like for uh, a small green, and that green was way small. Okay, one more. Wrap it up. Playing into the rainbow. All right, so you know this one is, you see a little bit more. Looks like there's a little bit more room. Fairways pinched down around the 300. It's probably gonna stop. There's a little bit of a hill. Bunkers not sculpted. So again, I don't see a whole lot of sculpting going on in these bunkers. That one doesn't look ridiculous. Interesting green. Falls off to the back. Creative shape. Can't even see where the hole is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> back right. Look at that. Stuck one close. You know, so folks, a lot of people don't like the shadows. It's way, it's too dark to have shadows in the trees, really, if you ask me. Sorry, sorry, shadows on the greens. You gotta watch your trees. All right, 
So good stuff, my man. You're very creative. I like it. Um, for all you creative guys who like the, the fantasy courses, have at it. Just try to keep some basics in mind, some fundamentals on golf, uh, some fundamentals on design, on the lighting, on your sculpting, um, and make them fun and playable. You know, don't make them too hard. You can put some fun challenges in there. But all in, people are going to want to replay it if it's fun, challenging, and, and unique. All right? So those are my tips on those kind of courses. Have at it. Have fun out there. We'll be back soon with more casual previews, uh, some course design tips. I think I've got uh, an idea for a great video. I keep talking about splining and fairways. I've got a cool idea coming up. Thank you for joining, and we will talk to you real soon.